It's very, hello everybody and, hello. and thank you so much for being here. It's wonderful to be here as well. My first time in, in Florida. Oh, Orlando, oh, very wow. first time. Wow. Big ups, <laughs> come on. Um, but yeah, coming to these uh, uh, events, it's, it's a, a pleasure and an honor to to meet up with the, your fellow actors and yes. you know, over the years you, you sort of seen that for conventions and nothing else. So um, it's just lovely to be able to travel, meet fans, meet your friends, family, in terms of mm -hmm. the actors. And um, when was the last time I saw you, Mark? Yeah, you see, yeah, a while back. It was a while, it was because a while back, the pandemic yeah. too, but yeah. it's been, yeah. and other reasons, yeah, but a long yeah, time yeah. back. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. um, five years, six but years, yeah, seven years, so it was a, it was a Steve Perry show, I think. Right. Oh, right. it definitely was. Yeah. <laughs> You know his Rhode Island Comic Con? Yes. Oh gosh. I think it was Rhode ago. Island. Yeah. That was ages ago. Okay, so then you know, so just ago. a pleasure to be able to travel and, and come out and, and meet everybody, see everybody. Awesome. No, it, it's yeah. so wonderful to have you guys here. This is and it's the same, yeah, for yeah. me. And um, for for me, because I'm a voice actor, they they get to work. You know, these actors they all work together. But for us, everything's done. You know, they've shot it, and we go in, and we, I never hardly would get to meet, unless there's a yeah. voice person yeah, in there yeah, yeah, with us, us, us voice people. It's very so, so it's really cool to, to, for me, over the years, to have gotten to finally meet the people that I'm in a film with, yeah, you right. know. That's, that was really awesome. And then the other thing is, Lucasfilm really was a family, and I was in-house there for a few years, so it really does feel like seeing a family member yeah, yeah. that you haven't seen yeah. for a while. You, there's a right, you, we, yeah, yeah, like the minute you meet somebody that's in the film, you you feel connected. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's it's, it's cool. yeah, it's wonderful. I, yeah. I, I'm sure, thank you guys so much so lucky. For, for being here. So you, you mentioned you're in like the, the voice acting side of things, and obviously you have this incredibly unique voice, mm -hmm. but. In addition to that, such a distinctive laugh that, <laughs> exactly. And I feel like a lot of your roles, you get to utilize your laugh, but in so many different ways. Yeah. So can yeah. you tell yeah. me? <laughs> I don't know why I, I ended up with being the laugh guy. Um, and I always, I don't know. And then I do a lot of, like right now, I'm doing a lot of uh, haunt commercials for the, I do a, like about 20 markets in the US, the major markets. And I get to use, you know, the <laughs> you know that kind of stuff. Yeah. So yeah, I do. I end up using them all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, sounds familiar. So grow, growing up, when did you start like realizing that your unique voice was gonna be a career for you? I didn't think I knew it was gonna be a career. I knew that I could do. Imper I was pretty good at impersonations mm -hmm. at a young age. And people would, because I would do, you know, I was born in 60, so I'm doing Bela Lugosi and Boris Karloff and those guys and Edward G. Robinson, who, you know, distinctive. They're pretty easy because they're so distinctive. I mean, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I know that in fifth grade, we had to give a speech on how to do something. I gave a speech on how to do impersonations. So that was kind of weird. Interesting. And, yeah, and... Um, I winged it. <laughs> I just told them about what I do, you know. Yeah. Not really. And then, and then, a funny one was when I was in high school or junior. No, it was early high school. I had to do um, uh, give a speech. No, no, it was in public speaking class. But we had to do a a radio station on a cassette, and you know everybody had cassette recorders do it at home, bring it in and make a little radio station thing. Mm -hmm. And I can't, I did it and I, and I did all the, I did a bunch of voices because I had commercials on there and all this. And I get, I turn it in and I get my grade and I had an F. An F? An F. And I'm like, what the hell? So I go to the wow. teacher, I'm like, why did I get an F? He said, you didn't understand the, the assignment. And I said, what do you mean? He said, you were supposed to do this on your own, just you. Oh, I said, okay. that is just me. He's like, no, it isn't. You have other people on there. I said, no, that's just me. So he made me do the voices. He goes, do it then, right now. And I did him. He's like, oh my God, here, A plus. Yeah. He's like, I'm sorry. I, I couldn't. He's like, he was blown away. He's like, I could never tell that was the same person doing. Wow. That's so yeah, amazing. So that was a long answer. I'm sorry. No, no, no. It's a cool one. That's a great answer. So yeah, at some point there was 
it was going to happen, I guess. Yeah, it's, me it's meant to be. Yeah. And, and with you, I mean, like, uh, was your background in, in dance? Yeah, yes, it was. And so when you got the role in Star Wars, how much did they tell you about it? And, like, was it a, a dance audition, or what, what type of process was it? Um, well, when I got the role, they didn't tell me anything about it, because um, it was all secrecy. Uh, when I auditioned for it, I had no idea what I was auditioning for. Um, when they asked me to go back and do a dance routine with a few other uh, females, we still didn't know what it was. Um, so it was very hard to base anything on the audition when we were auditioning, except to just do the best you could do. And then right at the end of the audition, one of the girls asked what it was, and they finally said it's the next Star Wars movie. So I went, okay, and I, I thought I, I did the best I could do and I was doing cats at the time and I'd taken the choreography up to London um, because I I had to be at the show by a certain time and um, he said look and he you know, he said look I think you've got the part <laughs> and, then he, I, and he said but don't get too excited and then when I got back when I got to the the, the uh, stage door there's a message from my agent saying that to call her and I did and she said they want to offer you the part in Star Wars. So, uh, but I am from a dance background, and before Star Wars, I had done lots of dance work, uh, and I've been dancing since I was four years old. So I knew that was that was one of my callings in this lifetime. Uh, so yeah, so that's um, yeah, a trained dancer. And you, and lots of people are, do ask me. Sorry to, to, no, it's okay. to interject. They say, oh, did you have a choreographer? And I went, oh yeah. Because, you know, if they say if I improvise on the spot, then you continuity, I'd have to remember what I did. Mm -hmm. But it was a, a week's choreography and then a week's shoot. So um, it was all planned. Interesting. Yeah. And, and you, you mentioned you were also doing Cats at the time, yeah. which is yeah. obviously one of the greatest musicals of all time. Oh, yeah, we started it. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, well, big ups, we did it. We started I did it originally in... Um, 81 with the original cast and then I went back again to do a part that I understudied and that's when I auditioned for Jedi as well so I was doing cats in the evening and Jedi in the daytime and then I suddenly thought because it took about six to eight 13 showers to get my green makeup I went oh god mm -hmm. so this time I'm gonna put cat makeup on and I said look I just need to have a week's break so I, I just concentrated on doing Jedi for a week and had a break from, from the show, but yes. What, what was your favorite number to perform in Cats? Well, I have to say, the, the one that I did was Macavity. Yeah, I, I played Bomb Ballerina and I think that was the best song. Okay, it's a good one. <laughs> yeah, it's a good one. Okay. Yeah, a jazzy sort of music. Okay, well, we can uh, transition back we yeah, transition like, back in. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I'm a, I'm a big cat. No, oh, cool. okay, cool. So, yeah. what, what was it like for you, Mark, the first time seeing the voice match up with the crazy <laughs> little character yeah. that had to be so incredibly surreal? It's funny you would ask that because um, I didn't, so I didn't, I hadn't seen who I was. I did it what they call wild. I went in the studio with Ben Burt. He kind of described this creature and then, I mean, anyway, so I ended up doing it. So, I hadn't seen it. And so, but I was with Luke, I was a, a carpenter at Skywalker Ranch. Oh, and I was trying to get into production, but they were like, well, we need carpenter right now, maybe you come in and then we'll bring you over to production when we have an wow. opening, yeah. So, so I went and did that and um, did it with him, I had no idea. So I went to the screening with everybody. And I, I'm like everybody, I'm sitting there watching the movie and I'm thinking, I wonder who I'm gonna be here. And all of a sudden <laughs> I see salacious cackle and here's what it was like. That's me! <laughs> Honest to God. I, I, and then I went, oh my God, I can't. Because I'm there with George and Harrison and all those people. And I'm thinking, I bet Harrison's back there going, yeah, that's me, kid. You know, it's like, dude, that was embarrassing. Yeah, uh, that's, that's how it was. I was blown away. So you didn't know... You didn't know who you were. Uh, I still don't know who I am. I'm, 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 <laughs> so on screen, you're, that's, that, and you saw Salacious. Yeah, and when I heard it, I knew that was my laugh, and I'm like, oh, that's wow. me. And I was with my wow. was a girlfriend, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and she's like, oh. And I was like, oh, my God. I mean, because when, oh, sorry, sorry. No, yeah. keep going. And then because when I was doing Jedi, and when I was sitting waiting to shoot my section, 
salacious crumb was, excuse me, a pain in the ass. <laughs> I it heard that. It really was a pain in the ass, you know, and you kept, Tim. Eh, eh, Tim. Yeah, Tim Rose so much. Yeah. So the fact that you didn't see the character and you matched, you corresponded or yeah, yeah. post um, cross pollinated with 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 the, which is incredible. Uh, 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 yeah, I did like probably twenty minutes of cackles and gibberish and screams and I mean a lot more stuff than ever Gosh, got used. Wow. Yeah, and then Ben took found a good fifteen seconds, you know, and wow. Wow, and uh, yeah, and so that yeah, and then after the screening was the cast. Were you in San Francisco? Did you or yo? Oh, you would have screened it over in. We the screened UK. it in the UK. But yeah. I, yes. So we yeah. screened it in San Francisco. Okay. And um, there was the big party and the you yeah, know, yeah. dinner and, yeah. uh, after. Mm -hmm. So then Ben came up and said, do you know who you are? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I'm a little guy with Java. And he's like, yeah. And he said, your name's Salacious Crumb. Great said, name. Oh, a great it's, name. I was like, oh, that's great. great. Name. It's yeah. the Oscar, but great name. Yeah. Sorry. So yeah. you said it was, the character was just described to you now. Do you remember like how they described? Mm -hmm. I do because he said he's uh, he's part bird, rat, monkey. Yeah. yeah. What is it? He's a monkey. He's yeah. a Kowakian monkey wow. lizard. Yes. <laughs> I wouldn't have yeah. known what that meant. Yeah. Yeah. But he's like he's he's kind of part rat, part bird, part monkey, and uh, yeah. And then he described. Scenes that aren't even in the movie, because you know how secretive they are yeah, about everything. Exactly. Like, oh, you don't I mean, know. Yeah, he's like, you're in the, you're out in the desert. So after he heard me do the laugh and stuff, and he's like, okay, I want you to do other stuff with in that voice. Mm -hmm. Just real quick, he was like, he described scenes. You're out in the desert. You see a big castle. You're 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 tired. You've been walking in the desert. Just give me like, uh, uh, you know, I just start doing, you know, and um, and it got to where you're in you're. You snuck in, there's a giant sleeping, um, you're hiding, I gave more sounds, yeah. everything was. And then the one scene where, so then he says, you stole this giant's cheese, the cheese just, or the giant just woke up, he's chasing you, you're scared, so I'm screaming. And he said, now the giant just caught you and he took the cheese back. Tell him you want your cheese back. And that's when I was like, Nah, he's like, just do some gibberish. So I did. So that scene, so I'm thinking to myself, give me that cheese back when I'm saying that. Well, that's, <laughs> you use that part. I know when I go to the ceiling after I got tapped in the ass yes. and I'm up on the ceiling and I yell back down at oh, them. Yeah, yeah. So really what I'm saying is, give me back my so if you guys have any questions now, is your chance to ask whatever questions you may have? So when you were shooting your dancing scene in front of Java, did they already have the music choreographed and, and sort yes. of playing? The, so you were actually yes, I knew exactly what I was doing. That's what I was always wondering. Like, yeah, at no, what time did they have the song written and performed and all that? Right from the beginning, when I was in rehearsals, they had the, the music. I knew exactly. Um, you know, the only difficult thing was that when, when I was dancing on this on the, the grate, it's silver, it was very slippery because of the sand, mm -hmm. and then I had my legus that kept smacking me, like, smacking <laughs> me in the face. When I, so you know, you had to just deal with all that on set, and then it, you felt quite conspicuous because you're the only one getting up and dancing in front of. I, well, I was fortunate because I had all the characters mm -hmm. in Jabba's Palace, you know, and I think back on it, I had everybody there That's just so waiting, <laughs> but um, but uh. Yeah, yeah, no, the, the, we, I had the music, I knew okay, exactly the music, what I was uh, dancing to. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> what was it like, oh, sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry, you go ahead. Oh, I insist, you. Yeah. I'll ask uh, that. This one's from Mark. Uh, you said you did voices when you were younger. Uh, was Mel Blanc your Mel Blanc? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I love Mel Blanc, yeah. Who's your Certainly. <laughs> you know, I was like, yeah. <laughs> Listen, I don't know. Listen, Buster, you know, <laughs> for 40 years you've been hogging the screen. I, that was in Gremlins 2. Well, I didn't do it. Noel Blank did it because Mel had passed. So on Gremlins 2. Right. But yeah, in fact, I was told that Mel, because we were, it was Warner Brothers and Amblin for Gremlins, that they actually wanted Mel to do the Gremlins. He was still alive for Gremlins 1. 
and they played, and I had already, I was already chosen to do it, and they thought, well, we need to get some other sounds in there. And they played, I was told by Mark Mangini, who was the sound man on that, he said, we played Mel Blanc, your voice. And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> what happened? He said, he listened to it, he said, you know what? I could probably do that, but it would tear my voice up. If that guy can do that without tearing his voice up, let him do it. Uh, that's honest to God. Yeah, I was like, wow. wow. That's wow. cool. <laughs> yeah. I never met him, though. I met June Ferre. I worked with June, but well, June was granny and Tweety and, and oh my God, uh, Natasha and Borat, you know, Borat, oh boy, which I love, you know. Uh, Paul Fries was, oh boy, moose and squirrel. Don't forget to write. You know, yeah, I love it. Paul Fries was my big inspiration. The, uh, the the Haunted Mansion. Oh, yeah. When I was 10 years old, I went. Uh -huh. And when I heard, you know, when the hinges creak in doorless chambers, and I was like, oh, man, so what good. a voice. Right. Yeah. yeah. Impactful. Yeah, he's great. So since you did mention Gremlins, obviously you got to voice multiple Gremlins. Yeah, and they all a have lot of them. Very unique, distinctive personalities. <laughs> now, do you have a favorite Gremlin? Well, Gremlin, I mean... And Gremlins won. I had the favorite scene, like the the uh, the the scene where we're in the movie theater, mm -hmm. and Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs comes on, and I I was so excited because I grew up on that, and I yes, went, so and we when we watch so right, you've yeah. done ADR, I'm sure to replace stuff. And they they show you the scene, yeah. and we're sitting there watching. I went, oh my god, and and Joe Dante, the director's like, what? And I said, I'm gonna be in a movie with the Seven Dwarfs. He's like, oh yeah, not only that, but you're going to sing their song with them. You know, hi, ha. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, this oh is crazy. God. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, that's, wow. those are my inspirations, wow. the Seven Dwarfs. But no, that was, so I have scenes like that. Now, Grumman's too, Daffy oh, yeah. is crazy, oh, yeah. and his eyes spin in his head. And it was Warner Brothers, and they're like, so this character's name is Daffy. What do you think he should sound like? I'm like, well, I think probably Daffy Duck, just with a gremlin thing going on, you know? And yeah, so, but Daffy was fun because he's crazy and he's funny. And uh, have, you, have you seen Gremlins? I have, okay. yes. I, have, I just oh, wanted, yes. not to put yeah. you on the spot. No, 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 no I have, but yeah. uh, it, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So I don't know if you've seen Gremlins too. Gremlins too no, is crazy. No, I've seen Gremlins. Yeah, Gremlins too. They had more personality. Right, and they, okay. Rick yeah. Baker made the Gremlins for Gremlins too, and they had a lot more personality. And Hulk Hogan was in it. And Hulk Hogan was yeah. in yeah. it. Yeah, I should And uh, Christopher Lee was in it, who I love. He was my he was my Dracula as a kid. Besides Bela Lugosi, oh, okay. right? So oh. he has oh. his he has the line, "You've got to stop them." If one of them should get away and kill it, eat a child or two, that'd be the most appalling publicity. That's cool. I was like, oh my God, that's the best line. Yeah. He's Dr. Catheter. Yeah. Oh, wow. Dr. Catheter. Yeah. Wow, okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Penny, when you shot your scene and you're struggling with the chains, who are you pulling against? Are you pulling against a team? Are you pulling against a puppet? Or is it all in the When I did in 82, 83, I had Jabba. He was holding, he, well, actually, there were four men in Jabba, oh. and I, I can't remember who was doing who was doing the arms. Um, but they were controlling it. They were controlling when I was pulling. But when I went back to do the special edition, um, it was green screen. Oh. But then they didn't use it. So, um, but originally I did it, I, it was with the, the nasty, sluggish, Jabba the Hutt mm -hmm. that I was interacting with. Oh, that's cool. And then, you know, they had a little TV monitor inside. And, you know, I got strangled a few times too, because back in those days, it was, you know, the, 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 the picture wasn't, wasn't clear at all. So they could just sort of see an image dancing around. But no, it was with Jabba. It was with my master that I struggled. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. That's yeah, a great yeah, it was cool. <laughs> When you went back for the, uh, the special editions, did you hear rumors about it, or did George call you? Or, or I had no idea. Like I, honestly, it just came out of the blue in, uh, I don't know, it was 95, I can't, I can't remember, 94. And I was just away in America, in New York, just staying with a really good friend of mine. 
at the Chelsea Hotel she was living in, and I had escaped. And I hadn't told, and I've told this many times, but I had not told anybody where I was. And then she said there was this phone call from Lucasfilm to call them back. And back then, we had this little telephone, and you had that little light flashing. Mm. You're probably too young to know any of that. Mm. But anyway, we had this little red light, and the little red bright light was flashing on the, on the telephone. And I, I, and this, I, you know, I played the message, and then, yeah, I called Lucasfilm, and they said, yeah, it's the casting director, and George Lucas wants to revamp the scene, the Jedi scene, Jabba's Palace, and um, we would like to bring you back in to do it to merge the scenes together. And then they said, we've got one question. You've got to fit in your original costume <laughs> to do it 14 years prior. And have you changed? And I went, well, no, just take some photos. So I did, and we sent them FedEx. And they said, no, 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 you'll be able to do it. You'll be able to do it. So they flew me out. There was no, I had no idea, it was just out of the blue. And it, they were saying it took them about three to six months to try and locate me. And everyone's saying, no, we won't find her. And if they weren't going to find me, then they were going to CGI me. Mm. So lucky they found me. Yeah. Yeah. So, wow. but, but I had to, everything you see in the special edition is what I wore originally. That's great. Wow. You had to keep that secret for two years? Excuse me? You had to keep that secret for two years? Um, no, no, because it was it was completely out. You know, when I got the, about going into, into um, the special edition. Right. No, no, that one I didn't have to keep the secret. It was just suddenly they, they shot it, and then it was I think it was eight months later the special edition was out. But prior, yes, I did have to keep it a secret. Wow. Well, yeah. What was it like donning the makeup and the outfit again? That had to be very so weird. I mean, even yeah. co the whole costume smelled the same. You know, it was like oh, so, wow. it was just like. Uh, but I knew, you know, because it took about four hours to do my makeup. So I thought, oh, here we go. It was, Get in there at four o'clock in the morning, stand there semi nude, get painted up. Um, so, yeah, no, I just thought this would be really interesting. And I thought when they said we want to add more to your scene, I thought I had to remember the dance routine from. And I, went, and I was playing it back on, and I thought, God, I can't remember it. Like, it was a nightmare. But luckily they didn't. They've got the three. I think the original, and I did originally, I think it's a better scene. Except when you see me going to the pit. Right. Um, but yeah, no, no, it was, it was all awful. And what was it like the first day on set when you actually saw Jabu the Hutt for the first time? Oh, oh dear. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, God, he's so, wow, it's so amazing. Because it, again, it wasn't CGI. It was Because originally it was a man who played right. Jabu the Hutt. Right. And then they checked you on the. Uh, you know, yes. Yeah, so actually, see, and I'm, you know, I for me, I'm not, uh, you know, the Star Wars lover or anything. I, I, it's for me, it's just stepping and doing the job and stepping out and continuing on my career. So I didn't know any of this of the backstory or anything like that about Star Wars. But anyway, seeing Jabba was incredible. He was, I mean, he, it, massive, massive. But as I say, four people had to fit in to him. Yeah. And it was, it was just, and it was really good to play against a, a live puppeteer in that respect. Very cool. Yeah. Any fun? Yeah, go right ahead. You said you're doing impersonations. Is there um, one that you just love to keep doing? And there is there another one that surprises people? Oh, there's, a lot. there's a lot. There's a lot. I love doing the Wizard of Oz. But, uh, uh, what's his name? I just, I, 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 his name just escaped me. I feel terrible. The original Wizard of Oz. And I've used him on thing. I discovered I could do him. I was doing a thing for Kellogg's, a commercial. And they're like, can you do, well, I wasn't doing it yet. The producer I'd worked with, and he called me and said, can you do uh, Frank Morgan? And I said, who's Frank Morgan? And he said, he's the Wizard of Oz. And it was back in the days of Blockbuster. I'm like, I don't know, let me go rent it and see. So I went and rented the Wizard of Oz, brought it home. I watched and I was like, back where I come from, there are many great men who do many good deeds. Those men are known as good deed doers. Now then, Dorothy. And I was like, shit, I guess I can. So I called him. I called him. I said, oh, what was his name? But I just called him and I as, as him. Yes, how are you today? I've heard you're looking for me. And he's like, oh, my God. You sound just like him. He knew right away who it was. I love Frank Morgan. He feels good because he's just this kind of a guy. You know, he's just, oh, now then. And he's a little bit... Absent-minded, I believe, you know, but uh, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. Yes. 
the great and powerful Oz has spoken. I love the, I love Frank Morgan. So that's probably why, because he feels really good to do. I like doing with the, the haunt things. I do kind of the Paul Freeze, you know, welcome foolish mortals to the haunted mats. And that, I love doing Paul. It's the ones that feel good. I can't impersonate somebody that I don't like. And I've talked to a lot of voice actors who say, if I tell them, I'm like, you know, I can't do people that I don't like. And they go, oh my God, me either. I'm like, that's really weird. Those <coughs> stuff. There's well, something. You can't embody that spirit. I don't. Yeah, it's like I can't do yeah. it. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah, so. Mm -hmm. but, um, thanks. That was a good question. Like Any final question? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I was wondering, what are the the head tails? You said they're leku. Is that what they're called? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, what is what are those made of, and what's it like having to dance with those? And were they heavy, or, or just I've never heard anything about them. So yeah, no, they're they're, um, they're made out of latex material. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's just so clever how it was done. I mean, how they molded them into it was like a helmet I had to put on, but how they just molded the whole lekus to 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 their design. Um, they were heavy, they were heavy. I think nowadays, because there's so many, that there, there's a whole market there for them now, and they're much lighter and they feel much more, you know, <laughs> just, yeah, they're lovely. But back then it was it was difficult, that it was difficult to work with them. Um, but, you know, it was very forward thinking how they came up with that kind of design, and it was very clever. Um, any final questions before we wrap it up? Any final thoughts on the two of y'all? Thank you. Thank you. It's thank really you good so to see you. Much. We haven't seen each other in so long. Yes, love to see you, Mark. Thank you very much. And thank you for coming to take my little chats and, and saying hello. Thank you guys so much. Yeah. It's been such an honor. No, thank, thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. And may the force be with us. Yeah, may the force be with <laughs> all of us. Yeah. <laughs> all right, everybody.